you very much. Uh, thank you all of you for being here today. Uh, Bishop, do you know how many refugees we accepted in the United States last year? I don't have those numbers. That number is 70,000. Uh, so I think the United States has done a pretty good effort of reaching out to all communities and accepting people. Do you know how many immigrants we accepted in the United States last year? Do not. It's in, in the millions. So uh, for anybody to suggest that the United States is not accepting people from other countries, I, I, I would really differ with you, and especially on a refugee status. Mr. Judd and Mr. Crane. I've heard a lot of reasons why this is happening. If you look at this chart to my right and to your left, the numbers started increasing in FY12. So the law changed in FY08. In FY09, you had about the same number as FY10 and FY11, and then all of a sudden the numbers started increasing by 124 percent, then 305 percent, and then this year we're estimating that there's going to be an increase of 1,300 percent. What has changed in those years in the country conditions in Honduras, El Salvador, and Guatemala? Do you know? I do not know, sir. Is there any evidence that country conditions have heard? Because we've heard a lot of bad things about those countries from the other side, and I agree that the conditions are not great. But has anything significantly changed in the last three years in those three countries? Do you know, Mr. Judd? I couldn't answer that. I, I have no idea. Now, is there any evidence that anything has changed in those countries overwhelmingly, that today the police is more corrupt than it was three years ago? Do we have any evidence of that? Mr. Vitell or Mr. Homan, do we have any evidence of that? No, nothing specific. So we believe that the conditions are about the same as they were in FY09, FY10, and FY11, do we not? I'm just not an expert on what is happening in those locations. I know that the groups as, you know, we've developed, I've synthesized the reports that we've developed that have been developed by our agents in the field. And there are four major factors that are. And what are those four major factors, if you could say really quickly? So it's, it, it's the violence, it's the economic conditions or the lack of opportunity, um, it's the failed, you know, uh, services, rule of law, et cetera. Um, and there is open source reporting, and we've had, we have our own reporting that say that people are under the belief, whether it's been promoted by smugglers or others, that there is some kind of benefit to be but, gained. But those, three, those first three factors have not, are not any different today than they were in FY08. Do you have any I, evidence that they are? I don't know the difference. but And I would submit to you that they're not. That it, it has always, they have always been corrupt countries. They have always had corrupt police. And the thing that is changing is your number four factor which is that they now believe that they can remain in the United States. Mr. Crane and Mr. Judd, when you talk to your agents, what are they telling you? What are they saying that these children are saying? Why are they coming to the United States? Again, our, our agents are required to interview these, mm -hmm. these individuals, mm -hmm. and the, the, most, the, the biggest report that we're getting is coming here because they can stay. Because they can stay. And, and I, I find it outrageous that anyone would say that things have, have changed dramatically in any of these three countries. And I find it outrageous that nobody understands, it seems on the other side, that inviting and saying that we are going to actually allow people to stay, whether it's for a month or for two years or permanently, that anyone would imply that that is not an incentive. Because if I had children, if I had been born in Honduras, in Guatemala, or El Salvador, and I believed that there was a chance for me to remain in the United States, I would do anything in my power to bring those children here. What do you think, Mr. Judd and Mr. Crane, the one single thing that we could do right now to stop what I do believe is a humanitarian crisis, but it's a humanitarian crisis that has been created by this president and by the lack of enforcement. What is the one thing that we could do today to change it? Mr. Judd and Mr. Crane. I I'm going to have to answer. I want to stop the smugglers. I want these individuals to be safe. I've seen too many dead bodies in the desert. I don't want to see any more dead bodies. I want them to present themselves at ports of entry. I want to stop the smugglers. That's what I want to stop. Thank you. Mr. Crane. Uh, if it's just one answer, I would say that we have to send a different message to the world, and that starts with enforcing the laws that we have on the books and uh, taking a second look at things like DACA and uh, 
If we start enforcing the law today, I will submit to you that we can save children. You won't see those dead bodies. You won't see these girls that are getting raped. And you won't see these children that are getting abused by these criminal gangs. I think it's time that we took this very seriously and we stop playing games on immigration. Thank